21st century mindset many times have not learned God's zeal. Come on. Talk about because it, of God's jealousy. Amen? Amen? Let's look at Ezekiel 16. We're going to see a story about God describing his heart for his people. Come on, Mike. So that it can show us the heart of God for us. And it's, it, it's an illustration to show how God feels. Come on. Come on. Right here. We'll pick it up in verse 1. Come on, Mike. Come on, Rob. It says, The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, confront Jerusalem with her detestable practices. And say, This is what the sovereign Lord says to Jerusalem. Your ancestry and birth were in the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite, and your mother a Hittite. This is going back to the land of Canaan. Just like to Canaan's land, I'm on my way. This has to do with God's people, guys. They were born in the land of Canaan. God sent Abraham to the land of Canaan. You following that? Yes. Guess who lived in the land of Canaan? The Amorites and the Hittites. And that was the land that the Israelites were born into. Then it says, next verse. On the day you were born, your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to make you clean, nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in cloths. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out in the open field, for on the day you were born, you were despised. Wow. Here, God is saying very, very pointedly, no one cared about you. Wow. Yeah, that's Nobody cared. Yeah. Verse 4, right, verse 6. Then I passed by and saw you kicking in your blood. Mm -hmm. And as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, live. There, that little baby in a puddle of blood with no one to care about it is found by God. Amen? And God says, live to that helpless child right there. Let's keep going. I made you grow like a plant in the field. You grew up and developed and became the most beautiful of jewels. Your breasts were formed and your hair grew. You were naked and bare. Later, I passed by when I looked at you and saw that you were old enough for love. I spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your nakedness. I, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going, let's stop it. Number one, God sees this, it's kind of graphic, sees this baby. And then says, and I cared about you. As you grew, I realized you've become the most gorgeous of creation. <coughs> Beautiful. In incredible. And then God says, so I decided I'm going to make my covenant with you when you're old enough. And he says, I spread the corner of my garment over you. This is just like Boaz, uh, Boaz and Ruth. Mm -hmm. When Boaz spreads his garment over Ruth to claim her as his own, as his own wife. Mm -hmm. And so here, God is claiming his people as his own wife in a covenant relationship of marriage. It is a marriage relationship now that we see they have with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then it says, I gave you my solemn oath. It entered into a covenant with you. There it is. Declares the Son of the Lord. And you became mine. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on. Isn't that intense? Come on. God says, you became mine. No one else's. Come on, bro. Verse 9. I bathe you with water. And wash the blood from you. And put ointments on you. I clothed you with an embroidered dress. 
and put leather sandals on you. I dressed you in fine linen and covered you with costly garments. I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arms and a necklace around your neck. And I put a ring on your nose, earrings on your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. So you were adorned with gold and silver. Your clothes were of fine linen and costly fabric and embroidered cloth. Your food was fine flour, honey, and olive oil. You became very beautiful and rose to be a queen. Is that amazing? Yeah. yeah. Here it says, God took this country, these people. He made up his own. <coughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah. And he made them into his queen. Then it says in verse 14, And your fame spread among the nations on account of your beauty, because the splendor I have given you made your beauty perfect, declares the sovereign Lord. <laughs> Here, what happens, and this is referring back to the Davidic time and era of God's people, when they were, God, the most powerful country in the modern world at that time. Everybody paid taxes to Israel. And so David spreads it, and it just, it just grows. And then Solomon takes over and enforces everything, and they would just have tons of gold and silver pouring into the country because of all the nations that paid their taxes. Isn't that intense? Yeah. So with all that, God says, you are perfect. Amen. This is great. Let's keep reading. Let's see what happens. But you trusted in your beauty and used your fame to become a prostitute. You lavished your favors on anyone who passed by. And your beauty became his. You took some of your garments to make gaudy high places where you carried on your prostitution. Such things should not happen, nor should they even occur. You also took the fine jewelry I gave you, the jewelry made of my gold and silver, and you made for yourself male idols and engaged in prostitution with them. Verse 20. And you took your sons and daughters, whom you bore to me, and sacrificed them as food to the idols. Wow. Was your prostitution not enough? Wow. You slaughtered my children and sacrificed them to the idols. In all your detestable practices and your prostitution, you did not remember the days of your youth when you were naked and bare, kicking about in your blood. God says, I'm a hurt God, an angry God, a jealous God, a zealous God. And a lot of people don't understand the call to be zealous. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Zealous is jealous. Come on. God raised us. He took us into a marriage covenant with him to say, you and no one else for the rest of my days. Come on, Mike. Israel forsakes the covenant. They went after other lovers. Yeah. Idols were more important than God. God says, you forgot what I did for you. That's why you strayed away. I don't know if you've ever had a relationship where somebody's been unfaithful to you. Mm. Yes. In high school, there's a girl I dated, and I hear, I get a call from her, she's at her ex-boyfriend's house while we're dating. Oh. And you just feel the rage. Mm. You feel the jealousy. 
you get ticked off. You get heartbroken. You get angry. How could they do this? We made a covenant. And in high school, you learned the dating covenant is not very strong. <laughs> but still, the relationship is wrecked. It's broken. You feel the seed, then you get depressed. And for us, we don't get it why God gets angry with us. Why does God get mad? Why is God angry? Why is he upset? Because he's jealous. He made a covenant with you and he never wanted to share you with anyone. You're his. He raised you. He cared for you. And he's furious when he has to share you with someone else, the world. <laughs> and so we fail to see God's vision for us. God has made a covenant with us, and he expects full devotion. Amen? Amen. And there can be no other lovers in our life. There can't be any other idols in our life at all. God has made a covenant. Amen. And we understand that with the marriage relationship, forsaking all others. But we don't get it with God, which is the closest relationship we should have. Amen. And so we start to see Christianity as a, it becomes a set of rules. You're not even engaged. Mm -hmm. Because you lost it. You forsook God, and now God is ticked off because he wants you back. Amen. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. And so you would think, well, what is God going to do? Well, let's look at chapter 16, verse 59. Come on, Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I will deal with you as you deserve because you have despised my oath by breaking the covenants. God says, okay. You want to cheat on me? You want to go and mess around with the other guys? The other girls? Okay. But I'm ticked. And I'm going to deal with it. And a lot of us think, why is my life not going well? Why is it so hard? Because you forsook God. And you went after the world instead. He's not going to make your life nice. Come on. He's not going to say, oh, that's fine, you're in the world, and we're all good. And you just go ahead and you keep prostituting yourself to your other lovers. That's fine with me, no big deal. Because he's a jealous God. Amen? Come on. That's great. Let's keep reading on here, verse 60. It says, yes, I will remember the covenant I made with you in the days of your youth. And I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Amen. Then you'll remember your ways and be ashamed. When you receive your sisters, both those who are older than you, than you and those who are younger, I'll give them to you as daughters, but not on the basis of my covenant with you. So I will establish my covenant with you, and you will know that I am the Lord. Then, when I make atonement for you and for all you've done, you will remember and be ashamed, and never again open your mouth because of your humiliation, mm. declares the Sovereign Lord. Wow. God says, okay, I remember our covenant. I want to take you back. Wow, wow. But it's not a trial, period. Yeah. Yeah. I want to make an everlasting covenant with you. Wow. I want you back forever. Oh, my. 
This is awesome. He says, hopefully then you'll remember what you've done. Mm -hmm. You'll be ashamed by it. Mm -hmm. And never again will you grumble or complain against me. When you understand that God is a zealous God means God is a jealous God, then you understand what it's like to be committed. God doesn't want to part. No husband is satisfied with his wife being half committed. Right. right. And God is not satisfied unless he has every ounce of you. Mm. Or he's furious. Mm. Because he loves you so much. <laughs> and of course God deserves it. Yeah. God made you who you are. God knit you together. And it even says he made you beautiful. Amen. God deserves everything that we have to. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, Come on brother. That's good. Well, like. Point two is zeal for God. Let's go to John chapter two. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. This is awesome. Come on, This one's confusing to a lot of church people. Verse 13. Come on, bro. It says, when it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem in the temple. Of course, he found men selling cattle, <coughs> sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So, he made a whip out of cords <coughs> and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle, he scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables to those who sold doves. He said, get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? The disciples remember that's written, zeal for your house will consume me. Jesus he goes to his dad's house, the temple, so fired up. And he walks in, and he sees everybody selling cattle and sheep and doves and money changers. And he gets tipped off. People just corrupt, trying to make a dollar. Wow. Not focused on God. Mm -hmm. He goes, he makes a whip. Mm -hmm. That's premeditation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he goes out and he drives the cattle out. And he flips the table and he says, get these out of here. And as you're sitting, you imagine watching the tables fly. <laughs> the whip crack. The coins flying go across the whole temple marketplace. And you're like, what is going on? And then finally, it's clear. And Jesus is standing there with a whip. Come on. That's so intense. And I'm sure. Somebody might say, is this a sin? No, right? You <laughs> get real, bro. Come on, bro. Help us out. Is this a little over the top right here? No. Yeah. This, this is not very relatable. <laughs> You've got to be all things all men. And you fail. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just, why, we should have just talked this out and been friends with it. <laughs> and the interesting thing is, out of the whole Old Testament, which is pretty big, 
One scripture stood out about Jesus. One scripture that described it. Zeal. Come on. Zeal for your house, God's house. Yeah. Will consume him. Yeah. Wow. Come on, bro. When they saw Jesus, they saw zealous. Yeah. And jealous as one and the same. Yeah. You saw the zeal of God and the jealousy of God in one single act. Wow. Clearing out the temple. He goes, get these idols out of here. And this was a man consumed with God. Right. He had nothing but God in his soul. That's all he cared about. And he wanted to clean out the temple. He didn't want it just looking nice on the outside. He wanted the inside to be pure. Oh, Amen. That's zeal. If you don't clean the inside, you're an abomination. You're a hypocrite. Come on, talk says. about it. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. We can go to church, and we're so focused on what people think about us. Come on. We come in, and it's not about God. It's about people pleasing. But God says, no, you got to clean the inside Come on. if you really love me. Come on. Yeah. And there's a difference from being a religious person versus being a zealous disciple. Come on. Yeah, yeah there is. Come on, bro. And there's not, God's not this religious nice God. Come on. God is a jealous God. Yeah. He is a God standing in front of who he loves with a whip saying, don't you dare touch them. Wow, come on. And he says, I want all of you to. I don't want part. I don't want 50, 60, 70, 80, 90%. Yeah. I want everything. Right? Yeah. I just want it. Amen? Amen. Yes, uh, Friday we went hiking for Cool. Yeah. Come on. And usually when you do something physically strenuous, it can show your spiritual state of mind too. You know what I mean? We were talking about like, yeah, one time we went with a sister who, who didn't want to go all the way to the top. And like, that's intense because she fell. She fell way later. Whoa. Wow. And so we're like, okay, we're all making it to the top. <laughs> because maybe persevering physically will help us out to persevere spiritually. Yeah. And so Charmaine started getting a little tired. Oh, oh, but we had already made the decision we're all going to the top. Nobody's giving up. And we're going and we're trying to help Charmaine. And we finally get all the way up. Brittany gave her a piggyback ride for a little bit. <laughs> and we get all the way up there and come all the way back down and then we pray. And Charmaine thanks God for allowing her to go all the way to the top and come back down. And back down. And I think, here, you say, well, is that Charmaine spiritually too? Oh, yeah. Charmaine's family persecutes. But Charmaine perseveres and stays faithful Amen. to God. Amen. Amen. And you would think, family persecution? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but Jesus went through it yeah. in Mark 3. But then his family became disciples in Acts 1. Yes. And he didn't give up. Yes. Come on, come on, brother. I think for us, persevering means you got to take a stance. Yeah. If we all went to that mountain today, do we all have the heart to go to the top? Come on, come on. Or would some of us say, "No, this is too hard." I'm just going to stay down by the cars. <laughs> you guys get back. <laughs> and spiritually speaking, do we all have a heart to make it to the top? Come on, bro. To say, I'm, I'm zealous for my God. And I'll never, ever, ever give up on it. No matter how hard it gets. No matter what person 
persecution comes my way, no matter what trials try to take me off course, I will stay loyal to my God and never give up on Him. We call ourselves disciples of Jesus. Come on. But like Christ, can you see yourself clearing out the temple? Wow. Is that your hearts? You're the real, bro. Do you have a zeal for God? That says, let's go. Even if it's me alone, I'll drive them all out. Come on. Come on. Are you zealous for the, the family of God, for God's people? Mm. Some of us, we're so afraid to even mention Jesus publicly. Wow. I can't even go out there and talk to people. It's too scary. I'm just going to be winning people over that I've known for 20 years. My friends. But are you willing to talk about Jesus in public? Come on, bro. Help us out. That's part of being zealous for God. Come on, bro. Amen? Amen. Amen. And Jesus, he understands, listen, I, even alone, will take a hard line stand. Yeah. Even if nobody's with me, I'm going hard lines because I love God. Yeah. I might be disfellowshipped for doing it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm taking a hard line stand for my Come conviction. On. Come on, bro. And Jesus, after he goes over the top, you know, seemingly, he doesn't apologize, doesn't say I'm sorry. Come on. That's right. He was consumed with jealousy over God. Yeah. For everybody to be holy in God's eyes, not just himself. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. The whole temple. He was zealous for. As a disciple, are you zealous for all the fellowship to be righteous and holy? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Or do you let disciples who See, like you're struggling, just pass on by and go away. Never to know where they're really at. Never to know what may be going on in their hearts because you just don't have the zeal for God's temple like you should. Talk about it, bro. Or do you have the deep talks and get open about the hardest things? Amen? Amen. Come on. Come on, bro. When you high sin, you spit in God's face. Come on. You corrupt his temple. Mm -hmm. And you separate not only yourself, but the people around you, even your kids, mm -hmm. from knowing God mm -hmm. because of your hidden sin. Wow. And nobody cares that you have hidden sin. And if you were to get open about it, they wouldn't care that, oh my gosh, you're in sin. It is flat out your selfish pride that keeps you from talking about it. Come on, bro. Because you're a people pleaser and not a God pleaser. Come on, bro. Because you want the outside to look good, but you don't care that the inside is disgusting and corrupt. Talk about it, bro. Come on. And if you really love God, and you really have the love of God in your hearts, you will pull someone aside. And get open about the nastiest stuff in your life that you haven't talked about. Come on. Come on. Because you're zealous. Because you say, God loves me. I gotta love him back. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta clean it out. Yeah. I gotta care for him. Yeah. Nothing will be off limits. He's yeah. my God. He bought me. Yeah, come on. I wanna be with him 100%. Yeah. When you confess all your sin, you're making that statement before the heavens and before the earth. Come on. I love God more than I love what people think about me. Yeah. And I want to be right with God. Yeah, come on. Amen? Amen. That's awesome, bro. Come on, Mike. Let's look at that, Numbers 25. Come on, All right, bro. Come on Mike. That's awesome. Come on, Mike. <laughs> says, verse 1, While Israel was staying in Shaitim, the men began to indulge in sexual, sexual morality with Moabite women, who invited them to sacrifices to their gods. The people ate and bowed down before these gods. So Israel joined in worshiping the Baal of Peor, and the Lord's anger burned against them. So you see it right there? Yeah. 
They go to another god, and God in his jealousy gets ticked. Verse 6. Then an Israelite man brought to his family a Midianite woman right before their eyes. Of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel, while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. When Phineas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw this, he left the assembly, took a spear in his hand, and followed the Israelite into the tent. He drove the spear through both of them. Through the Israelites. And into the woman's body. Then the plague against the Israelites was stopped. But those who died in the plague numbered 24,000. <coughs> the couple walks by. Nobody says anything. And Phineas just goes. Gets his spear and says, I'm going to deal with this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look what God says. Verse 10. The Lord said to Moses, Phineas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites, for he was as zealous as I am for my honor among them, so that in my zeal I did not put an end to them. Therefore, tell him I am making my covenant of peace with him. He and his descendants will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood. Because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. The name of the Israelite who was killed with the Midianite woman was Zimri, son of Salu, the leader of a Simeonite family. And the name of the Midianite woman who was put to death was Kozbi, daughter of Zer, a tribal chief of a Midianite family. Wow. These were leaders' kids. Wow. And Phineas put them to death. Wow. Because they were. Irreverent and disrespectful to God. <coughs> God says, fine, someone took a stand and killed these unrighteous people. And then God stopped the plague. For us, we need to have a seal for God, just like Phineas. And when God sees that jealousy for him, that seal for him, then God says, okay, I'm going to make an everlasting covenant with you. Because you are also zealous for me. And God is fired up when we're zealous. Don't you see that? Come on, Mike. Let's look at Ephesians 5. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Come on, brother. Come on, Mike. Ephesians 5, verse 1 says, be, imitate, be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. For us guys, if you want to be zealous, God says, first of all, live for Jesus. And then, don't even allow a hint of these things. Immorality, impurity, or any greed. Because they're improper. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Is there a hint of impurity in the fellowship? Mm. Sometimes we can even joke about impurity. Mm. And think it's funny. Mm. I mean, being in San Francisco, it's almost seen as progressive to be effeminate for a man. Mm. And to be touchy-feely and all these different things. Yeah. That's a hint of impurity. Mm. Mm. That's not right for God's people. That's right. right. You don't walk in and see God's people joking around about sexual things. Right, yeah. That's right. Or even acting like there, there's this, this special physical bond. Come on, bro. It's a sin. Come on. Keep it real. We need to be careful yeah. as brothers That's right. and as sisters. 
Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And sometimes, some of us, our love language is physical touch. And so we think, well, then I should just hug everybody and kiss everybody I see in the fellowship. <laughs> You've got to realize that can be a hint of impurity right there. Right. And if somebody who struggles with homosexuality comes into the room and sees that, they'll think, well, I guess they tolerate being gay here too. This must be one of those universalist churches. Mm. That just, whatever you are, that's fine. We gotta be very careful Come on, bro. Yeah. to not even allow a hint of impurity in the fellowship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. 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 It will cause people to stumble. Yeah. Yeah. It will cause visitors to come in and see this is this can't be God's people because these things are improper. Mm -hmm. right. What about greed? Come on, bro. Come on. Is there a hint of greed in your life? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Do you struggle giving contributions? <coughs> if you do, then there's a hint of greed. It should be joyful and fired up. Right? And we got to see, man, guys, that's a problem. Zeal for God means I'm going to crank my contribution. It is going to be awesome because I love God's temple. I love his house. It's going to be incredible. Nobody will ever be able to approach me on greediness in God's kingdom. Come on. And there are some incredible people in this fellowship who make an amazing example and say, you can't approach them for greediness. Mm -hmm. yeah. They give so much consistently. Every Sunday, you look and say, man, we wouldn't be where we're at if they weren't convicted and zealous for God. Amen. And their finances too. Amen, guys? Amen. For us, I mean, God has all awesome plans, but I think one thing we need to excel in as a church, because we're so blessed, is in our contribution. <laughs> to know that that's something that the church depends on, to be able to grow, to care for others. It's not going to make anybody drive a BMW, nothing like that. Right. This is the best place to invest in, in the world. That's right. Don't give stocks to Apple. <laughs> Don't buy stocks in anywhere else. Get stock in the kingdom here. Amen. Amen. Because then you've got a return investment when you die. Amen. That's you. Every other stock you lose when you die. Yeah. Right, but not this stock. Come on, Mike. This stock lasts for eternity. Amen. And so, for us, if you've ever studied out stocks, you just buy in every week. And that's how you make it. You don't try to play the stocks. If you listen to like what Warren Buffett says. Yeah. But you just, every week you buy them. But you got to make sure the company's good. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And I don't know what better place in God's kingdom Come on. for a good company. Come on. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're in the business of saving souls. Right. And tearing people out of Satan's grasp. Yeah. And helping people change from the inside out. Come on, bro. And not just to better improve their life in some small fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You saw Saab up here, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. When the women baptized her, they're all wearing I Heart SF shirts. <laughs> and when we first came here and we wore the I Heart SF shirt, we hadn't proven how much that heart meant. <clears throat> but after a year of sacrifice and battling Satan, mm -hmm. that I Heart SF shirt means a lot more mm -hmm. when you see a baptism. Yeah. 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 To say it's been a year. For this to happen. Come on, brothers. But it's worth it. Amen, guys? Amen. Amen. Let's look at uh, one of my favorite stories of Zeal, 2 Samuel 6. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Here. Verse 12. 
It says, now King David was told, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went down and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. That's fired up. David, wearing a linen ephod, danced before the Lord with all his might, while he and the entire house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts and, and the sound of trumpets. Isn't this amazing? Yeah. Right there is the ark. David in a linen ephod, which means it was his underwear. Because he couldn't dance with all his heart when he was wearing all those kingly clothes. He said, forget this stuff. <laughs> Just like when he went to fight Goliath. Amen. It's like, I can't wear all this armor. I just gotta be myself. <laughs> and he gets out there, he's like, I'm fired up! And he starts dancing with all his heart and jumping and leaping for joy. Wow. And like, man, David is cranking. He's so fired up right now. King David, in his underwear, with all the seal, <laughs> dancing before God. That's awesome. Say, this guy, he doesn't care what people think. Wow. He only cares about what God thinks. Yeah. Let's see what happens when you're zealous for God and only care what God thinks. Yeah. Mm. Verse 16, as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michal, daughter Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in his place. Inside the tent that David had sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. After he finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each person and the whole crowd of Israelites. That's a lot. Both men and women and all the people went to their homes. When David returned home to bless his household, Michal, daughter Saul, came out to meet him and said, how the king of Israel has distinguished himself today. <laughs> Disrobing in the sight of the slave girls, of his servants, as any vulgar fellow would. <clears throat> David said to McCall, It was before the Lord, who chose me rather than your father, <laughs> or anyone from his house, when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people of Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this. Come on. And I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. Wow. And McCall and daughter Saul had no children to the day of her death. <laughs> Translated, the marriage was over. There was no more sex in that marriage. Wow. Dang. You know, there's a lot of different things we can learn from this. Yeah. But you would think when somebody gets zealous for God, that there would be nothing but accolades and applause. Huh. Right? Should be that way. But what happens is those that aren't zealous get critical. Yeah. Yeah. They get offended. And they even will point it out. <laughs> this is how disgusting the way you acted. <laughs> I can't believe it. This is ridiculous. Is that intense? Yeah. Yeah. Oh See, when you get fired up, people will be critical. Yeah. I mean, even in this room, we think, oh, I can't sing loud because what are people going to think of me? Come on, bro. I mean, somebody might think I'm going over the top. Uh, 
So I'm just going to blend right in with everybody else. I can't say amen because then I'm going to stick out. I'm going to look like I'm being prideful. Amen. 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 And, and if I do that, then pe what, are, what are people going to think about me? Wow. I'm just going to stay quiet like everybody else. Wow. Oh, bro. Talk about it, bro. Don't hold back. If that's you, guess who you're trying to please right now? God. Oh, so. nah. I mean, people. <laughs> but that is, if you're, you're a people pleaser. Yeah. Keep it real. People that don't sing loud and don't say amen loud, but have their quiet times and are consistent disciples, those are people pleasers. Ooh. Come on. Mm. Because you've got to be fired up for church, right? Yeah. Don't you feel like, man, this is the best place in San Francisco. Yeah. This is awesome. We're worshiping God together. And yeah, we're small, but God's going to do something awesome. Yeah. Come on. That's true. Awesome. And so we got to be fired up. Don't contain your zeal because some lukewarm person is going to get critical of you. That's right, bro. Talk about that. There it is. Oh, I'm sorry you're lukewarm. Let me calm down here. Don't hold back. Don't hold back, bro. There it is. They're the ones that need to repent, not you. That's right. Yep. And, and they're the critical ones saying, wow, how bad you're acting right now. Somebody accused us at SF State of being too focused on evangelism. Uh, yeah. What? They said, you know why you know why people are coming to you? Because you're just so focused on evangelizing. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you talking about? Come on. What are you talking about? <laughs> We're fired up about God. Yeah. They're like, but you're inviting our people to your Bible talk. Yeah, because we want to invite the whole world to our Bible talk. It's not your people, it's the whole world. Come on. And when we're on campus, and we invite everybody on campus, everybody's getting invited out. Come on. Come on. But a lukewarm person gets ticked off. Yeah, yeah they right. do. That's right, Mike. Wow. And that's how you know somebody's lukewarm. Yeah. Wrong. When they get ticked off when they're challenged. That's it. Mm. That's right. Say, how dare you challenge me? <laughs> I was perfect in everything I did. <laughs> you need to look at yourself. <laughs> and you say, okay, Chad, that person's with warm right there. <laughs> because how does a fired up person respond to being challenged? Thank you. Amen. Uh, wow, this is awesome. Help me be better. Yeah. That's Thank right. you. Yeah. What else can I do? Yeah. I want to do as much as I possibly can. Yeah. Uh oh, I didn't call that person. I'm going to call him right now. <laughs> Thank you. That's what a fired up person sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Guys, don't let a critical person cause you to hold back in your seat. Yeah. 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 Celebrate before the Lord like David. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And just know, man, I'm so fired up. Come on, Mike. I'm so fired up. And yeah, maybe I look like an idiot. And maybe I'm going to be more embarrassed later on. But I don't care. Because God has chosen me. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm fired up to be Come on, brother. Come on, Mike. A heart that knows God is a zealous heart. Come on. Do you have zeal? Are you a zealous person? Would you stand up in the temple and clear the tables? Would you stand up for God's people and destroy sin no matter what it took? Would you dance and sing with all your might, even though you look crazy to some people? Come on. Are you zealous like God's zealous for you? Come on. I want to challenge you. If you're not, wow. it's time to make a decision. Yeah. To say, I no longer care what anybody on this earth thinks. Their thoughts will die with death. Wow. Yeah, come on. But God lasts forever. Amen. Yeah. His thoughts never die. Yeah. And I'm going to please him. Yeah. Amen? Amen. 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 Wow. Keep it coming, bro. Come on, Mike. Amen. Quite fun. You know, in the end, I mean, there's so many incredible disciples who've done this. 
you know, you look at the room here, you just say, man, so many examples of people who stood up in the face of intense persecution, say, I'm going to be righteous. Yeah. Come on. Because I love God. Come on. Come on. And before God, you're commended. God loves you. And God will work through that. And there will be the backlash, but God will be proud. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, really, in the end, amen? amen. God, will, God will do his thing, and we just focus on worshiping. Amen. amen. But God's jealous. For me, this sermon was preached back in 2007. And it was preached by Kip, more or less. And three weeks later, at the, when, when, I, when Kip preached this, I was living with my girlfriend. But I was still going out to the beach and having some quiet time. Because I liked it. <laughs> wow. And so I'm going to the beach and having quiet times, but living with my girlfriend and being immoral. And finally, there came a night where my girlfriend started flirting with another guy in front of me. Wow. That hurts. And that fury. <laughs> <laughs> It was, I've never felt something that intense. Oh, and I told her, don't you touch that guy. Don't you touch him ever again. Two hours later, she'd do the same thing. Mm -hmm. oh, I said, I'm going home. She doesn't even go home. She goes to an after party. God was trying to teach me yeah. what jealousy was all about. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. I go home, I go to the beach that next morning. I cry, I'm like, God, I'm so hurt. I'm so, I feel so much rage and anger and jealousy. And then I remember this lesson. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wait, I'm in sin. <laughs> Telling God I'm feeling angry because right. my girlfriend's flirting with another guy. Yeah. When we're living in an immoral relationship. Mm -hmm. right. But I'm praying to God right now <laughs> in an immoral relationship. Come on, God. God is jealous of me. Yeah. I'm making God feel exactly like I feel. Wow. And when that clicked, I said, never again. Yeah. Never again will I do this to you. I will never, ever, ever spark this jealous rage in you because I'm cheating on you with the world. Mm -hmm. And that's why I decided I want to be restored. Amen. And now I'm here. <laughs> and so, for us, really the thing that's going to lead us to repentance when we are living in an immoral life is that God is jealous for you. And he doesn't want you to be shared with anybody else. Amen. Amen. So, in the end, I got restored, joined the church, and just decided from now on, I will never turn my back on God. Yeah. I'll never be unfaithful to Him. I'll never go to the world ever, ever, ever again. Because mm. I love God and I want to make Him proud. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.